I'm Ken Gould from the Virtualization Solutions Engineering Team within EMC's Global Solution Centres. In this video, I'll take you through replacing a Virtual Recover Point appliance. Here you can see a fully functional virtualized Recover Point cluster installation. To simulate the need to replace a virtual RPA, we will power off and delete one of the existing appliances. A failure in a physical RPA usually involves a complete appliance replacement for ease of repair. In the case of a virtual appliance, it's even easier. All we need to do is deploy a new virtual RPA from the template we created earlier. We give this appliance a name, which could be the same as the failed RPA, or different, depending on your preference. In this case, we'll call it Site B VRPA3, and we'll place it on one of our vSphere hosts that contains a supported QLogic HBA. While that's deploying, let's just confirm the fact that the Recover Point cluster has recognized the failure of RPA2 in Site B. Now that the template has deployed, we need to edit the settings of the appliance and assign two QLogic HBA devices to the virtual machine using VM Direct Path, since RecoverPoint requires direct access to QLogic HBAs in order to operate. This is exactly the same procedure used during the initial install of the RPA cluster. Remember also that the maximum number of VM Direct Path devices that can be assigned to a virtual machine is two. Once powered on, log on to the new RPA using the Box MGMT credentials and configure a temporary IP address, the same as the replaced RPA. Supply a gateway address if required. In this case, it's not necessary. Now we use the Recover Point Deployment Manager tool, which we used to set up the cluster originally. Except this time, we choose the RPA Replacement Wizard option. We specify a configuration file, and then we specify the floating management address of one of these sites in the cluster along with the box MGMT credentials. The tool detects the missing RPA and pre-selects the site and RPA number that need to be replaced. Then it retrieves the relevant information and prepares the system for the replacement of the RPA. Again we see a checklist of prerequisites which relate more to physical RPAs than virtual, other than the fact that the target vSphere server should of course be racked, powered and cabled if not already the case. Of course, what is actually happening here is that the new RPA is assuming the identity of the failed RPA, including the worldwide names, if you choose the default option to spoof the failed RPA worldwide names. This has the useful benefit of avoiding any need to rezone or remask anything to get the new virtual RPA up and running. The tool really does everything for you once you've specified the floating IP and credentials. At the end of the process, when we check the Recover Point Management GUI, we can see that everything is back up and running as before. Thanks for watching and please look out for related videos on how to install a virtual recover point cluster, how to move a VRPA to another host and using SRM with VRPAs.